Hi, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this edition of 45th Comprehensive Course on Echocardiography. We are going to talk about mitral and aortic regurgitation today. Basically, both of these things, they are almost complementary to each other. So if you try to learn the one, one of them, the rest of things becomes very easy. As I said in the, my last talk also, <clears throat> those people who have missed the basics of echocardiography, it becomes really little difficult for them to understand now the applications of echocardiography in clinical practice. That's what the aim is as on now, right? <clears throat> Let's look at certain important things. Why evaluation of severity is important. This is a graph for evaluation of a severity of mitral regurgitation. Onset of symptoms, sorry, onset of severity of regurgitation, LV dilatation, dysfunction, and then onset of symptoms. From this graph to this graph, the cumulative survival is much better once, but with development of symptoms, the cumulative graph do, goes down dramatically for survival. So we have to pick up these people at a much earlier phase when, when there is a severe regurgitation, the LV starts dilating and the, before it becomes dysfunction. And once it becomes dysfunction, obviously the persons develop dyspnea and other feature of congested cardiac failures. Similarly, look at this graph, which is almost 20 year old, event-free survival with no MR versus severe MR. And this is a period of follow-up of almost 2000 days. Here is a follow-up of approximately one year. This is a follow-up of approximately three years time. So, if we have a severe MR, within one year, almost 30% population have disappeared. Here, the 40% population has disappeared. If we don't treat them at a proper time. Then based on the ejection fraction, as the ejection fraction goes down, what does it mean by goes down? LV dysfunction sets in. And as soon as the LV dysfunction sets in, Obviously, they become class 2 to 3 or 3 to 4 in NHOIA classification of dyspnea. And their survival or cumulative survival goes down dramatically. And just to say all these kind of a thing is, we have to pick up really these people at a much, much earlier phase rather than let them grow over a period of time and then we try to pick them up. This is a very important slide. Pronostic value of left fatal volume index in asymptomatic organic mitral regurgitation. And if you look at this slide, if the LA volume index is less than 55, here is group one. If it's more than 55, with a change of LA volume index of 40 ml per year, this is group four. So as we move from LA volume of less than 55 ml per meter body surface area to more than 55 with an increase in LA volume of more than 14 ml per year, the cumulative survival or incidence of combined event goes up dramatically. Clinically, how do we look at these kind of things? Obviously, we have a cardiomegaly, we have a systolic murmur, then because of increased flow velocity, we have a diastolic flow sound. Then we can have whatever the variety of systolic murmur is, failure signs of a third heart sounds, mid diastolic number and splitting of S2. What all is important in echocardiography is, the first and foremost thing which is really important in these people is, there cannot be any person who is severe MR and does not have an increased LV dimensions. Take this point in consideration. If you have a severe MR, except for acute MR, if you have a severe MR, if LV is not dilated, 
it means we have to go back and reanalyze it again. Associated for LA dimensions and ejection fractions. Overloaded LA volume, that's what in, depicted in JS 2013. And then look for a cause of MR. I'm going to show you a couple of causes of MR because the surgery is dependent or the intervention is dependent on the cause of MR. What all we look in these subset of populations, this is what everybody has been doing in this world even today also. They're looking at a jet area or jet area versus LA area. Then come vena contracta. And amongst these two, I see at your level, both of them are very important and especially the vena contracta, which is very, very important. PISA, I'll spend a little time on it. Not PISA at your level. I'll say a few words about regurgitant and volume in a different methods by whether it's a content equation or other method itself. Same thing, what I said is, it's a main determinant of mortality and morbidity. LV remodeling does not happen with mild MR. Surgical correction of MR is highly successful. Operative risk of valve replacement versus repair is very negligible even today also. And many of you must have read recently the amount of people are doing mitral clip and severe mitral regurgitation along with LV dysfunction giving to a better mortality and less mortality and morbidity. And if you have a severe MR with a cause, you should consider intervention in the form of surgery or semi-invasive interventions. Well, when we are in doubt, we still look for angiogram, but we have many other modalities which are available today is like transesophageal, two dimensions, three dimension, three dimension transthoracic also. And then cardiac MRI, which is very, very useful to assess the quantitative of MR which the person is suffering from. As I said a few minutes back, amongst all method, color flow Doppler jet method, though dependent on many pathophysiological and instrumental factors, is still the most important thing for day-to-day -day evaluations. And after 2014, what are the new methods that we advise us? We start looking at vena contractor, PISA method, LALV dimensions, ejection fraction, and symptomatology. And look, these of areas method, they does not figure in 2014 onwards. We have to learn a little bit about mitral valve anatomy. What is the mitral valve anatomy here? This is mitral annulus. Look, wherever I'm tracing, this is my mitral annulus. This is anterior mitral valve leaflets. And this is posterior mitral valve leaflets. Both AML as well as PML, they attach from cords to papillary muscles. And this is one commission, this is second commission. We call them as medial commission or lateral commission. In turn, they are known as anteromedial versus posterior lateral. AM plus PM. Why these looking at this structure is very, very important. As we said in Dr. Parash's talk was mitral stenosis. If we have a severe mitral stenosis, what do we split? We don't split the leaflets. We split the commissures. So we open up the commissure. We split this commissure so that the area across this mitral valve becomes more. And if you have a lot of calcium on these commissures, Obviously, we'll have got a lot of problems because subsequently the oversplitting happens. And because of oversplitting, we do not get a good results and we can develop a severe mitral degradation. Types of mitral degradation, primary and secondary. Primary is leaflet abnormalities like mitral valve prolapse syndrome, myxomatous, degenerative, infectious, inflammatory. In this myxomatous changes, we can have a prolapse, flail, rupture, or elongated cords. Degenerative calcium deposition or thickening. Infection, all of us knows, can lead to endocarditis, vegetation, perforation, and aneurysm. And inflammatory, the most common condition in our country is rheumatic, of course. 
but we see many people now coming back with radiations many people coming back with drugs having inflammatory pathologies and as we have number of people subjected to breast carcinoma radiation post chemotherapy we find many people coming back with inflammatory changes congenital we could have a cleft leaflet or parachute mitral valve secondary all of us we know secondary is not it is because of what it is because of ventricular remodeling it is not because of leaflet per se and what's that ventricular remodeling is any kind of a cardiomyopathy whether it could be a dilated ischemic or non ischemic and if your lv is dilated which could be an atrial fibrillation or other pathologies even the annular dilatation leading to secondary mitral regurgitations now look at this patient very very carefully this patient has got a very long leaflets of mitral valve and these leaflet they are getting back into the la which is known as flail aml when the tip of the leaflet billows back into the la which is known as flail when the body is prolapsing back into the la this is known as prolapse with every systolic contraction you find severe torrential mitral regurgitation and that's what seen in myxomatous primary degenerations where the etiopathogenesis is not secondary it's primary and here is myxomatous valve leading to severe mitral regurgitations then come flail here what exactly i said the same thing over there the tip of the leaflet in four chamber billows back into the la the coaptation line is lost and we get a severe mitral regurgitation again another example when the pml is flail and given as eccentric mr jet and this thing can be very clearly seen in real time three dimensions echocardiography this is the picture from this patient which i showed you couple of minutes back look i can't tell you very categorically you can't pick up very categorically the severity of mr as very categorical whatever the leaflet will have a flail the jet would be in the same direction same patient in three dimensions echo i'll fix up for you here is a tip of the leaflet which is blowing back into the la now c category here is a aml tip here is a pml tip they are not coopting with each other with every systolic contraction the tip of the pml is going back to the la so the jet will play back along intraatrial shaft and whenever we are doubt this is what modality we require in our laboratory for evaluation i don't have to say anything about any one of you what is this degenerative changes we see lot of calcium on the mitral valve leaflets here is posterior mitral valve leaflet is anterior mitral and look lot of calcium is not on pml which is normally is the scenario here is anterior mitral valve leaflet having a lot of calcium and this is classical scenario in patients who are in post chemotherapy undergoing radiations what the radiation does it gives inflammatory conditions to these valves and subsequently these valves they develop calcium deposition over them over a period of time comparing to pitch previous picture now you can see a myxomatous degeneration on the lateral side and this is possibly is not seen the picture is not there this is aml this is pml and pml has got a lot of posterior mitral annular calcification in the subset of population same thing degenerative seen by transesophageal echocardiography here is la here is lv here is aorta and we see lot of torrential jet in mr degenerative with flail leaflets thickening and the pml is prolapsing back into the la same degenerative changes with eccentric mr this is a 18 year old 18 days old newborn with proven fungal aspergillosis endocarditis see how much big masses are there on this tip leaflet classical infective endocarditis like is torn billboards on a airport that's how the looks to be there is no doubt about it i am not going to look at any severity of mr in this patient 
I'm not going to look at the severity of MR in this patient of a neonatal fungal endocarditis. The diagnosis is obvious. Now look at aortic as well as mitral leaflets, infective endocarditis. Very classical example of perforated mitral valve. Look, the coaptation point is over here. Here is a mitral vegetation. Same patient coaptation point, apart from the coaptation point, there is a severe mitral vegetation to a perforated AML. And if this kind of a perforation is present, obviously nobody is going to talk of any severity. These people will need what? They need emergency surgery. Mitral aneurysm. You can see a beautiful mitral aneurysm in two dimensions as well as three dimensions picture. No, cannot say anything more than this. And this patient has got associated severe mitral vegetation. Do I really need to look the severity in this patient? I'm not going to do that because I have to take up these patients for emergency surgery. Same patient with severe mitral regurgitation. Carry for a look is the aneurysm of AML and severity of MR. Very classical patients of endocarditis because of hyperesnophilia. Look, here's a mass in LV apex. There's a deposition of hyperesnophilic granules, esnophilic nodules on the tip of the mitral leaflet, leading to severe mitral vegetation. Then, valve dissens. Here is the leaflet, and the leakage is appearing away from the valve leaflets in the endless ring. I don't have to do anything. This patient has to undergo a surgery for redo surgery for a valve replacement. This is one patient again from our own lab where the old time prosthetic metal valve was inserted in it. And look at the degeneration of prosthetic metal valve. This is three dimension picture. You can see one strut over here, one strut over here, and third is lost completely. It's got degenerated or I say preferably degenerated because the patient was not carrying any fever. And because of this degeneration, you can see this flail leaflet over here. You can see a flail leaflet over here. And this patient had a severe mitral vegetation, ultimately going for surgery. Rheumatic, I'm sure every one of you knows what is the rheumatic pathology is. Now, this is cleft leaflet in three dimensions echo from our own lab. Look at the cleft over here in AML. We could not point out a cleft without this three dimensional picture. And we did a three dimension 3D T to look at the cleft of AML. Then parachute mitral valve. Why this parachute is? We have only one papillary muscles, the lateral one. The medial is not seen at all. So all leaflet tips they get attached to single papillary muscles, giving rise to a parachute mitral valve. Secondary remodeling. This is one LV gets dilated, and because of ischemia of the lateral wall, you develop an ischemic MR. What is the etiopathogenesis? Is ischemia. And if you prove ischemia in this subset of population, correct ischemia, MR will disappear. LV has significantly dilated. LA is huge. Annular dilatation giving us a central MR check. Again, annular dilatation because of atrial fibrillation. Look at the arrhythmic beat, which is abnormal. Both RA and LA, they are dilated. Again, a restrictive cardiopathy. And this is what, just to, for a namesake, I don't, you don't have to remember at this point. Annular dilatation versus perforation, type one, when leaflet pathology is, leaflet motion is normal. When you have excessive leaflet motion, that is type 2, it could be prolapse or play. And type 3 is when you have resective leaflet motion, whether it could be thickening or fusion or LDLA dilatation. So this is what a carpenter classification is. Next question comes, how do we assess mitral vegetation? What are the pitfalls and 
the take home masses of the pearls in its assessment. Look, this is what I was saying, still is the most common thing in our material. Anybody will look at this, hey, it's a silver at centric jet of MR. Are we really correct? Maybe to a large extent, at your level, I can say that it is. But if it's severe, LV is not dilated. True, it's eccentric. It's touching the posterior or RA free, LA free wall. It is definitely severe. But this set of MR is dependent on what? It is dependent on LV contraction and LA pressure. If LV contraction is hyperdynamic, BP is 200 by 100, you will find more amount of this jet. If BP is 100 by 70, you will find less amount of this jet because of the driving force. Second, LV function. If it's poor LV function, underestimation. LV function is good, reasonable, reasonable evaluation. If the LA pressures are elevated, what will happen? If these LA pressures are elevated, it has to push blood into the LA against pressure. So it will be underestimating the jet. If LA pressures are low or normal, we'll be doing the correct assessment of MR jet. So all this method, whatever I showed you over here, the are still most commonly useful, utilized in the clinical practice, but is dependent on very many variables. Let's look at the methods which are really, really useful. First and foremost, which all of you really wanted to know is, if the MR is severe, we'll find a lot of blood speckles in the regurgitation jet. Higher the density of this jet, possibly we are dealing with severity of MR. If you find less amount of these side signals, possibly we are dealing mild. And if the flow velocity across this mitral valley is also increased, then possibly we are dealing with severe MR. That is qualitative, not quantitative. Then even the signals are dependent on severity of MR. Normally, it's a tongue-shaped signal. So acceleration time and dissolution time is almost a shorter, the same. If you have a picture of a Doppler signal pattern where the acceleration is faster, deceleration is slower, it means patient has got definitely a severe mitral regurgitation. Now, the gradient may not be very high. And why this happens? Because this rapid equalization of LV and LA pressures. Next comes ratio of jet area versus LA area. And this ratio of jet area versus LA area, many people, they are still doing it. What exactly they'll do? They'll trace the L jet area in a color flow mapping and then trace the LA area. And ratio of this jet area versus LA area is less than four centimeters square. This is only a jet area, not a ratio. If ratio area is less than four centimeters square is known as mild. If the area is more than eight centimeters square is known as severe mitral vegetation. Again, many factors like large LA area, atrial fibrillation, LV systolic pressure, raised LA pressure, and the Nyquist limit. And whenever you look at this method, the limit has to be 50 to 60. This is a little over in this subject of 62, but has to be 50 to 60. Next comes jet area versus LA area. When we look at a jet area versus LA area is When we look at a jet area versus LA area is, if it less than 20 is mild, more than 40 is considered as severe. So previous picture was four and eight, this is 20 and 40. That's what the severity of MR is. But if you really look what exactly the best method for looking for the mitral valve area, mitral regurgitation is, we always look at single one important factor is. And that's what I always do in my lab. I always look the area through which the MR jet is originating. And the MR jet originates when? It originates during system. 
So if the area M LV is contracting, it's pushing back blood into the LA. And when it's pushing back blood into the LA, the narrowest point between the two leaflet through which the jet is originating, this is known as vena contracta. And here is the example. Here is I'm measuring a two leaflet point. I've zoomed up this picture. This is the point and this is the point through which we measure the vena contracta. Even this is dependent on pre and post load conditions, but it's reasonably accurate to calculate this vena contracta. Again, a diagrammatic picture where we look at the vena contracta at from this point to this point and between the two leaflets. So what we do in our lab is we keep two screens on the side by side where one screen is only shows a two dimensional picture and the second shows, shows up color pictures. So we know from where this jet is originating and we have to mark at what stage mid or late systole we see a maximum vena contract. Nyquist limit 50 to 60. This is lower over limit but it has to be 50 to 60 to give you an exact values. And this is one if you have a severe mitral regurgitation anything more than 7 centimeter 0.7 centimeter or 7 millimeter is considered as severe mitral regurgitation. Conditions are, it has to be only in flax view. Zoom it up. No baseline shift of the Nyquist limit. Major the side of MR jet within the regression to orifice, just below the flow convergence. Anything more than 0 0.6 or 0 0.7, we consider as 0 0.7 as severe mitral regurgitation. This is a very common method which all of you can do it very easily. This is mitral aortic velocity integral ratio, MAVE. What exactly this is? We look at the flow across mitral valve, VTI. Then we see a flow across aortic valve, VTI. And we take the ratio of mitral aortic flow integral, flow velocity integral ratio. And here is a pictorial diagram. I've seen the flow across aortic valve. Calculate to the VTI, VTI is 45.6. Then mitral valve, 45.9 VTI. So mitral aortic velocity integral ratio, 45.9 divided by 45.6, it's more than one. And if it's more than one, it's considered as close to severe, as shown in this picture, which is regression to orifice area more than 40 millimeters square threshold for severe mitral and this correlates very well with this marvel where the severe MR is 1.3 plus minus 0.3 and mild and moderate is 1.9 plus minus 2 and we normally keep a cutoff of 1 as a ratio. So whenever we have this marvel mitral aortic velocity integral ratio more than 1 it is considered as severe. Any one of you can ask me, what is the basis of this? Look, the basis of this particular uh, imaging is, when you have a severe mitral regurgitation, the volume across the inflow of mitral valve will increase. So what we are looking at, we are looking at the flow across the mitral valve. At the same time, we are looking at the flow across aortic valve. So if you have a severe MR, the flow across aortic valve will increase, the flow across aortic valve will increase. And when this will happen, the ratio becomes more than one, we call them as severe mitral regurgitation. You can calculate the regression volume also at the same time. How to calculate the regression volume is, we look at the end diastolic volume in four chamber view. We look at the end systolic volume in four chamber view. End diastolic minus end systolic volume, that gives you a stroke volume across LV. But this LV volume, stroke volume, is not alone going to the LV OT. What does it exactly go? A lot of blood goes back to the mitral reduction. So we calculate the stroke volume across LV OT. Taking into LV OT VTI and LV OT diameter, we calculate the amount of volume <laughs> going through. Dr. Rakshit, please uh, silent your mic. Rakshit Bardwaj. So, 
stroke volume minus flow across LVOT, that will give you a regurgitation volume. Anything more than 70 is considered as severe. Very simple, go to four chamber view, when you calculate ejection fraction, trace, and that'll give you the volume, end diastolic volume. Then systole, end systole, trace, that'll give you end diastolic volume, end systolic volume, this is end diastolic volume. End diastolic minus end systolic, there's 150 ml. Amount of blood which is going through the LVOT is only 80 ml. So where the 70 ml gone, went back. So can tell you the mathematical equation. Little cumbersome, but this is one, we are in doubt, we always try to utilize this formula to calculate the regurgitant volumes. Similarly, extension of this method is what we did in last case is we look at mitral VTI, we look at LVOT VTI. So in this, we look at the mitral flow, stroke volume across mitral wall. We look at the stroke volume across LVOT. So amount of blood which is going through stroke volume across mitral wall minus the amount of blood which is going through the LVOT would be the regression volumes. And that's how we try to calculate direct regression volumes in both of these methods when we are in doubt. So concluding that, what are the things? Most important thing is vena contractor, severe versus progressive, jet area versus LA area, 40% or more, regression volume more than 60 ml, then LA enlargement is always there in severe MRs, LV enlargement always there in severe MR, then you can have a raised pulmonary artery pressure and symptomatology and angiographically grade three or four. These are HA, ACC 2014 guidelines. And if we add furthermore to it, what we always say, the enlargement of LA is very commonly seen when we have a severe mitral degeneration. And this is not primary. This is not secondary. These are the people who are severe MR, chronic MRs. Because in acute MR, we are not going to look at all those kind of a things. As I showed a couple of examples for acute MR. A detailed slides talking of almost the same thing in valve guidelines in 2017. So what is the indication for surgery? I'm not going to go into details of indication for surgery, primary versus secondary. Once you are able to detect amount of severity of MR, then we talk of these things during level two of echocardiography. So the pulse of MR estimation is acute versus chronic. Then at your level, calculation of severity by vena contracta and LVLA dimensions. And this 3D echo really makes you help, very helpful when you are in doubt of a cause of MR. And here you can see again the flail PML giving us to severe mitral degeneration. So I'll stop it over here to talk about mitral regurgitations and I'll hold and stop this so that we can ask